You're watching Telecom TV from SCWS World 2017 in London. And I'm joined now by Mukid Ali, who is European VP Operations at AWTG. Mukid, thanks for joining us on Telecom TV today. What have been some of the main challenges that the small cells industry has been facing over the past few years? Uh, there have been technical challenges in terms of uh, uh, functionality and uh, uh, features uh, which have been taken on by the big, uh, uh, some of the big uh, vendors within the industry. A lot of the challenges have been, uh, ha have been solved, resolved or are about to be resolved. Um, the main challenge facing the industry right now is, say, is that of finance. So um, who pays for the deployment and finance and deployment of small cells? Operators are, are lackluster to invest in small cells. They see that as a, um, a difficult business case with a difficult return on investment. Uh, and the user community who you might uh, think would naturally want uh, those services are also um, hesitant to invest because they see that as a, a service that the operator should be delivering to them as part of their contract already. So um, small cell deployment companies um, and, and vendors are stuck in the middle uh, between the operators and the user community. So there's a need and a want for small cells, uh, but there's an unwillingness on the part of any of the three parties to pay for the financing. And what is the role of small cells in the path towards 5G? So small cells is going to play an absolutely critical role in the uh, enabling 5G services. Um, uh, to gain the capacity um, and coverage that 5G is going uh, to need, we're going to have to deploy a significantly larger number of small cells. And we're talking you know, factors of 10, 50, 20 times more than, than currently uh, is the case. So in London alone, uh, we're going to be talking about you know, 20, 30 times the capacity that's uh, currently delivered to date. So there's going to be a, a big challenge uh, and a big role for small cells uh, within the 5G services coming, coming in 2018, 2020. Is mobile edge computing, multi-access edge computing, is MEC a key enabler of future 5G business models? It's certainly one of the key enablers for the ultra-low latency uh, use cases that 5G is looking to deliver. For example, um, uh, the one that everyone talks about is uh, connected autonomous vehicles. If you're going to deliver safe connected autonomous vehicles with ultra-low latency, you're going to have to deliver um, edge computing. And what would you say are the main challenges of a network operator in their evolution and transition to becoming a digital service provider? So, so certainly that's a good question. Thank, thank, and um, operators have moved transition in a way from their traditional model of being infrastructure um, operators towards service providers. Uh, and as part of that challenge, they're going to have to deploy a lot more uh, infrastructure um, in order to deliver those uh, services to the level of quality and reliability that users have come to expect. Um, one of the key challenges will be how, how to deploy that within the timescales that they're looking to deploy and how do you get the ubiquitous coverage, how do you get the coverage, uh, capacity levels. And they're going to have to um, uh, partner with people like local authorities. They're going to be absolutely key in, in the enablement of future 5G services. So one of the, the main challenges that operators will face, apart from the regulation and the standardization, which are always challenges in any technology cycle iteration, is gonna be um, partnering and working with government and local authorities to facilitate the rollout and rapid uh, deployment of the uh, infrastructure needed in order to deliver the end use cases that 5G is looking to deploy. Wakidali, thank you very much indeed.